Thank you, Season 4, Episode 10. Does the tournament begin today? Yeah, no kidding. Competition aside, I'm just walking into a room full of people, looking at you. Just let them do what they do best, play volleyball. At this point, there's not much more you can do. Just trust in what they've built, which is a lot. See, that's that's more of a reaction that I understand. What is this? Haikyuu the future years? Is that what we're setting up for? Did you just steal something by accident? Damn, that... That is intense. Hey, good luck with that. I mean, it's just a high school tournament, right? But it may as well be the Olympics for them. There's not one comp competitor in this whole arena. And if there is, if there is a comp competitor, it's probably not a good thing. They're probably overconfident or just an absolute veteran. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baggage mix up. That is a big problem. That is a big problem we need to figure out immediately. This is not what we need right now. We need to focus on the game. But knowing Hinata, this will... <laughs> this might lead to him meeting some crucial person in his life, just like how they met Ushiwaka by accident. Episode 10, Battle Lines. <laughs> this is what you get for shopping at kids' stores. Oh, it's his sisters. Oh no, another Yamaguchi failure. Time to make up for this with a bag watching arc. Thank you, I needed that. I needed that reassurance. Hey, Kakeyama, being the leader king yet again. She's gonna run there? My god. This is good for both of them. Yeah, Yachi can sit in. There's only one manager allowed in the court, right? It's a big day for her. That's a beast. <laughs> like, literally, wow, wow. Respect. Now, running is not fun. So <laughs> it's a great service to the team. I was taking a bus. <laughs> I was picturing her running all the way there, which would have been great, but that makes a lot more sense. Run to the bus stop. She was mentioning this, her hurtling injury. That's what I must have missed, or maybe they never showed the dice you recruited her. And that's no small task, given how complicated volleyball turned out to be. Oh uh, yeah, she obviously cares quite a great deal, even though she's not the most vocal person. I think the, the very same thing that makes sports or competitions so great and important to explore is the same thing that carries a lot of the pain, which is that unlike a lot of things in life, there's not a whole lot of bargaining with it. It just kind of is what it is. You play the way you play, your physical stature is what it is. You push yourself to the limit of your abilities and you hope your teammates do the same, but that's really as far as you can take it. There are, you know, just some certain realities to that. That's the benefit is that you get to explore that stage. Through that, you get to hone values that are actually really important because there's really no other way. There's nothing else you can do. It kind of forces you into a tunnel of what actually works, what actually are good values. At the same time, it's painful. And one of the realities of that is injury and just physical incapability. I imagine in the moment, without the perspective of time, especially as a young person, it would be easy to feel like things are hopeless and lost. But like I've said many times, this is not about volleyball only. It's one game in a set of games with the larger game being life. And I think the point is still the same. The objective is still the same. The values are still the same. There's just a certain amount of faith that goes into believing there are other avenues and then doing the work of finding them. And most importantly, not doing nothing, you know, not just giving up because the first dream didn't work out. The show that I'm thinking of now 
ended up being scripted and some terrible news came out about it. But I believe this moment was true and I think about it all the time. It was a reality show and there was an actor on the show who was talking about how he had given up on his dream and everybody was pushing him to not give up. But he said that sometimes you just have to face the fact that things are over and look on to other things. And he was saying all this while crying. And I found it was really moving because it's something that we don't really talk about as much. We don't talk about the moving on or the knowing when to call it quits. Almost all the messages we get are about do your best fight for what you want, believe in your dreams and you will succeed. When that's one, not always true. And two, maybe not the healthiest outlook, the hard work itself, the going for it, the believing in yourself, those are great things, obviously. And the narrow focus also is great, but there's a zone in which that becomes not focus necessarily, but obsession and narrow mindedness. The world can be a playground and there's so many options. The fact that Kyoko found this, I'm sure is something that she'll end up being grateful for. And she will go on to live her life as well as she can, probably very well, based on her character values. And she's exploring a lot of the same values the kids are, even though she's sitting on the sidelines. But I love these little character looks, they're so great. That's, that's a lot to adjust to on the fly, but I guess maybe everyone is experiencing the same problems. No excuses, just playing. Because the lights? Huh, I thought of that. Interesting. Never thought about the roll of the ceiling. So many intangibles. Lights too. Okay, quota complete. Huh. Prove me wrong. <laughs> he, uh, he's grown a lot recently. That camp really did him wonders. And also the King incident. He could be himself. Tanaka just Tanaka. We have no time for bowing. <laughs> oh good, it continues. Oh no, the bus. Maybe she's gonna run. That she was a good choice. This is kind of the, the practicing of uh, passing of the baton, in a sense, feels. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying, I was getting at. Oh, it's a hurdle! <laughs> it's a symbolic hurdle! She just cleared it like it was nothing. Aw, that was... That was... <laughs> Really nice. It does seem like Gachi's going to be the one on the sidelines in the game, as the manager. <laughs> why, from her, why is it such a great gesture? Just the single fist in the air. You know all the hurdles she had to go through to get those shoes? And also, something to add to that, I think that it's natural to want to be like a leader. It's natural to want to be on the court. People are drawn to the spotlight and to glory and some positions get more glory than others. That being said, in my experience, while I, th I think it's important to strive for that in, in some areas or to know what that feels like or to take on the challenges that those roles bring because in a sense they're unique, there's something really beautiful about playing a supporting role willingly and gladly. I've experienced both and both of them have their blessings and their lessons. And I think as she's alluding to, the supporting role thing, I think one of the essential things is caring about the people that you're supporting. If you're really aligned with a group of friends or teammates or whatever it is, just being able to point to something you did that enabled their success feels like a shared success. Oh, I'm getting a little bit choked up talking about this. Some of my favorite moments or events in my life were when I really had no spotlight or, or no glory or it wasn't my accomplishment, but I've clearly felt like I had contributed to a good friend's achievement that they were happy about. And I'm fortunate enough that those friendships are good. So I've had them tell me the same thing about times in which they've helped me. So what she says resonates with me. It doesn't feel like any kind of capitulation or failure on her part to be the manager of the volleyball team. It doesn't feel like a concession. It doesn't feel like something she's doing because she's given up on her life. She's doing it with dignity and character. And that speaks well of her and it speaks well of what, what will happen for her, what she'll be able to do in the future. I wasn't expecting this super sentimental start to this tournament. But here we go. Here come new challengers. Time to start caring about a new team. It's not gonna happen. Not much of an introduction this time. I don't want to care. I don't want to care. <laughs> oh, another serving team. We too have been working on serves. 
Nice. They've done the research. They've watched some tape. It's funny to think about the contrast and how teams think about them from the beginning till now. He's not wrong, though. They seem like nice guys. I might feel a little bit bad when they lose. That's true. This is all the elite of the first level. Yep, it's unforgiving. Yeah, imagine serving first. Koyama's is the perfect person, though. It's all good. Even the smallest team can stream can become a river. That's cool. Nice. At least he's in two meters. I mean, speaking of Ushiwaka, if we can reject Ushiwaka, we can reject this Terra guy. What? What happened? Is it the stadium? It's Kageyama. Right, right, right. It's all good. I believe it. <laughs> and you know, they could have ripped into him for that, or Hinata could have, given their rivalry. It's different when they're playing. Wow, we even have announcers. It's funny, this is just a random... <laughs> Thing. I have a friend in Korea from Russia. He's a very interesting guy. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He's always finding new new hustles to make money. His current occupation is he goes to volleyball games in Korea and live streams them for the for the sake of Russian betting, which I think is hilarious. And I might go join him for one of these games soon. Practice would have been nice. A little bit of practice. This doesn't feel like. We're being beaten. It feels like we're beating ourselves. <laughs> Kagami is kind of susceptible to Tan Hinata just doesn't not reading it. I think you just you made it worse for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Kagam is not the one. As an opponent, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell because he's quiet, but he's one of the most competitive. <laughs> By any means, whatever it takes. At least he uh, is using his head for, for points this time. I mean, you get... Not to count this one out, but you get two sets anyway, right? Or two games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm honestly, to Karasuno's credit, I've been predicting that this whole series. Like, I don't know how many times I've said that when they start to lose. I'm like, oh, the danger here is they sink into it. But they almost never do. That's one of their greatest strengths. Is they, they find a way to rally. They're never beaten emotionally. And I think part of the, the reason for that success is something that the show, I believe, has touched on directly. Is that it's not about saying you're going to keep calm or telling yourself you're not going to lose. But focusing on what you have to do. Focusing on the active rather than the inactive. Oh yeah, that was the thing. It was somebody was serving and said they were not going to hit it to a certain spot. And so of course they hit it to that spot. The same is true of that kind of emotional rallying. Maybe some people can do it, but I cannot tell myself to not feel bad. What I can do is focus on things I feel good about and focus on activities that either make me feel better or at least just give me something to focus on that's positive and helps my life. Speaking of playing roles, it's fine. Just serve well. In other words, focusing on something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
It's in between both of them. Here we go, time to start this roll. <laughs> nice. A lot of history behind these serves. Right? That's what I'm saying. He's rising to be a team hero. This actually fits in quite well, this episode, because of uh, what was happening with Kyoko. It's different, but it's role-playing. It's being satisfied in, in your role, seeing its importance. Three points, not bad. Whoa, that looked beastly. Yeah, three points was not, not a big deal before, but farther you get. And it's over. That was the end of the river, the tiny river. I love how everyone can just read each other's minds now. Oh, and this is awesome black and white montage. It's their spatial, uh, his spatial awareness leveling up. It's a grid of light. Did his eye just become a bullseye? And that was the moment they realized that it's, it's over. No chance. It's all good. They were, they were, they trusted in him. That was such a great, like, narrowly cohesive and tight episode because there are two themes that repeated a bunch. One, as I mentioned, was the role playing thing, both Kyoko and Yamaguchi. The other was the question of what do you focus on in times of extreme nervousness and anxiety. And for both Yamaguchi and Kageyama, and I guess the whole team, it's not to let themselves melt down, but to focus on what they have to do. I think without experience and without at least some knowledge or some self-knowledge about what kind of states you go through and the practice of doing what you have to do under pressure, it would be easy to do what they were worried about. The whole meltdown, giving up, letting the losses feed into your performance. But Kageyama has it exactly right because when he starts to feel off or like it's not doing well, instead of seeing it as something that is systemic to him or faded or like, oh, I'm just terrible, which would be an easy route to go down. It's, oh, this is off. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this worked out. That immediately gives him something to focus on, something actionable. It gives oneself a feeling of control or that the task is malleable, manageable. And from then on, your nerves are likely still there, but it's kind of like whatever because you're still doing what you have to do. And he can adjust. He adjusted. That, I think, is a really nice way of looking at things that is way broader than just sports because inevitably there are times of high pressure or things going wrong and it's easy to kind of dwell on those things and let them overtake you but I think the path is always going to be the same maybe not always but a lot of the time there are just some things a handful of things you know will be good to do you know will be good for you and then to do them anyway to get through them and give the rest time to fall in place like everyone else you know there are days where i just really don't have a lot of energy things seem not great or maybe even pointless but i mean i feel like especially on those days i have to do what i need to do even if there's a big problem and i don't see a clear answer well i can do the things that i do know how to do that i do know will good i gotta go shopping okay I go shopping exercising don't feel like exercising, gonna exercise anyway. Especially on days where I'm not feeling great, gotta exercise. If there are any small tasks or chores that have been nagging at me, just gotta do them. And then I do them, I do as much as I can, and before you know it, the bigger problems seem a little bit more manageable, my mood is better, and the problem inevitably passes and or is resolved one way or another. Alternatively, I know the other route. I know the path of just indulging deeper and deeper into inactivity or ignoring problems, and it just makes it worse. It makes it so much worse. This episode is interesting to me because we're going into the tournament. I was all gung-ho for a game, but the, honestly, the the other team kind of seemed just like placeholders for us to do great things and for us to explore great life themes, which is really quite nice, actually. Though I'm sure the intense volleyball action will resume shortly. 